Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please take a seat. The notices are as the sheet uh, or what you've been sent by email. Just something I wanted to remind you about. It is the Ride and Stride next Saturday. Um, and myself, Bernadette, Marlene and Diane are going to be riding, driving around the parts of the county, looking at different churches. Unfortunately, I've got to dash off straight after church. I have got my sponsor form, but I've got quite a lot of sponsors. So if you'd like to sponsor someone and you haven't, then please see Marlene or Bernadette or Diane after, after the service. Um, and then there's nothing else for me to say other than to welcome Paul back to us and Sandra to our service. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have a happy time of fellowship together. So thank you, Paul. Right, well, good morning, everybody. Nice to uh, be here. As you know, we've uh, designated the first uh, Sunday of every month now as an all-age worship. Um, so it's not just for, for children, but older people, younger people, people in the middle, whatever sort of age or however old or young you happen to, to feel. So hopefully there's going to be something for everybody during our time of worship together today. So it's nice to come and share worship with you today. And what we're going to do today is really going to follow on from what I did uh, a month ago, where, can you really remember what the, uh, the theme of the service was last month, August? Yes, Steve? Shepherd, that's right. Because if you, those of you that were here remember that I dressed up in a, a shepherd's costume and uh, we were looking at the verse which Jesus said, we're looking at a number of I am verses in uh, John's Gospel and last month's was I am the Good Shepherd. Now this month we're going to be looking at I am the door, I am the door and uh, I just happened to have brought a door along, well a cardboard door anyway along with me to, today to um, share with you. So we're going to be thinking about that and it does link in a lot of ways with Jesus' teaching about the, the Good Shepherd so we'll be thinking about that as we go through our service uh, this morning. So we're going to start with our opening song, which is, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. And we're here to bring our praise and our worship to God this morning. So let's stand if you wish to sing, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Remain standing if you wish, as we'll just uh, have a short prayer and just commit our time to, to God. Father, we thank you that we can rejoice this morning 
because you are here with us. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful morning. We thank you, Lord, for the, for the sunshine. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that we see around us that you have created. We pray this morning, Lord, that we might give you our praise, our thanks, and our worship as we come together this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, be with us. May your Holy Spirit, Lord, come upon us today. Fill our hearts, Lord, with gladness and with joy as we think, Lord, about the things that the Lord Jesus Christ did while he was upon earth and what it can teach us today and how it can help us live our lives in this world. We pray these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to remain standing now and sing our second hymn, which is, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Right, you have a little sit down now. <laughs> now, I want us to think about, I've got some doors here, some famous doors, and uh, I want you to sort of guess where you think uh, the doors are. So let's have a look at the first door then. So where's the first door? Buckingham Palace, that's right. So what do you think it would be like going through the gates of Buckingham Palace? What, what, what do you think it would be like if you, you got, got into, into Buckingham Palace? You, uh, sorry? You've been to Buckingham Palace? Oh! <laughs> you've, been to, you've been to Buckingham Palace. What's it like? Yeah, oh brilliant. Is it good? Yeah. They're quite excited, isn't it, actually? You know, give you access, doesn't it, to lots of different things when you go into uh, to Buckingham Palace. And, uh, you know, it's one of those places, isn't it, that, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of us would uh, be interested to, to go into. Right, let's have a look at the next one, shall we? Where's this? Any idea where that is? Yeah, Wormwood Scrubs, absolutely. <laughs> Wormwood Scrubs Prison, yeah. Now, who'd like to go into Wormwood Scrubs? <laughs> yeah. Sorry? Oh, right, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I've been in a number of prisons, actually. I used to work in prisons uh, in the early part of my career, and. Uh, I'll tell you something, some of them are a lot better than others, actually, and I think, but I don't think Wormwood Scrubs is one of the good ones, actually. It's uh, in need of a bit of uh, TLC, I think. Right, let's have a look at the next one. Any idea where that is? Near, <laughs> yeah, it's Windsor, yeah, but not, not the safari park, something else in Windsor. Legoland, that's right. That's Legoland in, uh, in Windsor. Who'd like to get a Legoland? Yeah, a few people like to go to Legoland. Quite exciting, isn't it, really, going to, uh, to theme parks and things. And, uh, you know, Legoland is uh, probably a good place to, to go. Well, what about the next one, then? Right, where's that? Number 10 Downing Street. Who'd like to go there? <laughs> I've been, in, I've been in number 10 once, actually. It's uh, quite... Uh, not, not very exciting, actually. It is <laughs> just like a just like a normal house, really. Um, but uh, there's a lot of interesting things go in there. I, I must admit, I'd like to be a fly on the wall. I think at some of the uh, the cabinet office meetings and things that they uh, they have there. So interesting door, I think, isn't it, to to be behind? What about this next one? <laughs> <laughs> Who'd like to go through that door? Eh? <laughs> but you know, doors actually, church doors particularly, are actually quite scary for a lot of people who don't normally go to church actually. And, you know, a lot of people have said to me, oh, I don't really want to go into a church actually because, you know, it's a bit scary and I don't really quite know what goes, what goes on there. And you know, some people can be a bit a bit nervous and of course that picture the doors are shut aren't they and of course shut doors on a church send out sort of a very different message don't they to doors that are that are open on a on a church and of course jesus said you know that he is the door and the words of jesus when he said i am the door didn't mean that I am the door of a church, you know, so just coming through the doors of a church doesn't make us a follower, a believer in Jesus. It's a lot more than that. We need to have a personal relationship, a personal encounter with Jesus himself. And, you know, if you come to church every week for your whole life and things, but not ever really meet Jesus. And we're going to think today about, you know, the importance of how we need to have that relationship, that coming to Jesus, and that Jesus is the entrance, isn't he, to a lot of good things that we can enjoy and, and share with. So 
Let's look at the, 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 the verse for today. This last week's verse was, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And this week's verse talks about Jesus being the door. And I'll explain a bit later on in the service, the relationship, what Jesus was talking about when he said, I am the door. So it's a bit of a, bit of a strange kind of thing for, for Jesus to say. And it actually links with what he was saying earlier about being with the good shepherd. So let's say this verse out loud, shall we? And we'll say it through a few times. And then later on in the service, we'll come back and I'll see if you can remember what the words are, okay? Right, ready, let's go then. I am the door. Hang on. <laughs> Hold on a minute, Phil. <laughs> right, let's say it all together then. I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. John 10, verse 9. Right. I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. John 10, verse 9. Okay. Right, we thought we might sing the Bar Bar song again. You can bring it up now, Phil, uh, which we did last uh, month because I thought everybody really kind of got into the, the, the swing of this, actually. And so we've got, we've got this song and we've got another song, which Chan, a new song that Sandra's going to teach us in a, in a few moments, actually. So uh, this, is a, this is a warm up song, this is, so that you've got your bodies and everything loosened up for the next one, which is not quite as energetic, I don't think. Right, so, so if remember we do, when we get to the chorus, we do bar bar, he's the good shepherd, everywhere he goes, I go, he knows. Bar bar, he is my saviour, I will follow where he goes. Okay, so you can stick and do the actions, or you can stand up and do the actions, I'll leave it entirely up to you. So let's have the video then and we'll uh, see how we get on with this. Bye -bye. He's the good shepherd everywhere I go he knows. Bye -bye. He is my saviour and I will follow where he goes. Jesus loves me, finds me, cares for me, watches, saves me, leads back home. Baba, he's the good shepherd, everywhere I go he knows. Baba, he is my savior, I will follow where he goes. I was so <laughs> right now have we got some uh, energetic young people in the congregation this morning well we've got a little game well would you like to come forward please now this is the song sandra oh yeah 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 right good good no it's all right no that's fine right so we have some volunteers Sorry? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, they yeah, say where they are actually, yeah. Right. Anybody else like to come and volunteer? Come on. There's no there's no come on. Yeah, leave, especially leave a number. Come on. There's, there's no talking involved in this, and there's nothing embarrassing, all right? It's just a straight straightforward um game. Right. Now what we've got here is we've got a lot of balls, some of them have got sheep on, and some of them haven't. Okay? So that one, so you've got to, you've got to try and find the ones with the sheep on, right? I, I got one. Not yet. Not, not yet, though. Right, so we want one team. So I'll tell you what, shall we split, split you up? Would you like to, would you? Yeah. Would you two like to form one team? So if you'd like to go over there. Right, now this is your sheep pen, right? Where you're going to keep all the sheep in, right? And team over here. This is your sheep pen, okay? Now the object of the game is to get as many balls, right, with sheep into your sheep pen. I'm gonna set me watch it a bit, the clock in a minute, so uh, we can set a timer up on this if I can find it. Um, And you can only use, you can only have one sheep right in your hand at a time. So you can't take a whole, whole bag of sheep with you on that. And at the end of the time, right, when I say it's the, the team with the most sheep in their sheep pen. Now, if you want to be really naughty, right, you can steal from the other person's steep sheep pen. Right, so you've got to have as many sheep in your thing as possible. Right, so how long should we get? Three minutes? Three minutes starting from now. Right, go. You only take one you only have one sheep in your hand at a time. But you've got to have one with a sheep on it. Um, yes, it. Oh, you can go as well. Go on. That's it. That's it. So you've got to find one with a sheep on it. All right. One ball at a time. So you have a look to see, make sure you get one with a sheep on it, right? 30 seconds so far. Come on. Quick, quick, quick. How are we doing? Ooh, I think the cow, I think we're getting a bit tall. We're getting a bit even now. <laughs> Oh, hang on, there's a sheep dropped on the floor over there. Yep. <laughs> oh, we're doing very well. Hold on, come. Come. Actually, we'll Do make that. this two minutes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, two minutes, yeah. So, one minute 15 we've had so far. So, you've got another 45 seconds to go. It gets more actually. <laughs> oh, we got some home. <laughs> right. Nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Time up. Right. Do you want to count the sheep, Catherine? Do you want to count the sheep? How many? Sheep? They're actually going to have the balls with the sheep on it, right?
Oh, right. Oh, I must have not. Oh, well, that's uh, that. Uh, yeah. No, I forgot to remove that one, actually. <laughs> 13? 17. 17, right. So this team are the winners. Yay! Better luck to this team. You did very well, though. Very good bit, of, good bit of steel in there, actually. Right, thank you very much, everybody. You don't have a little rest now. Not, not yet, no. Before we do the song, we're going to be sensible now, and Lois is going to come do a Bible reading for us. Well, tell you what, if, do you want to come over here, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'll, if I hold the microphone near to you, or you can hold it if you want. Right, now we're going to read from John 10, verses 1 to 10. John 10, verses 1 to 10. And then that verse, you know, that it had a sin, or it's, it's buried in here, okay? Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way. Well, he is a thief and a robber. The man who goes, goes in through the gate, he is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name, and he leaves them out. And when he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow someone else. Instead, they'll run away from such a person because they do not know his voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they didn't understand what he meant. So Jesus said, Again, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All others who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Those who come in by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life. Life in all its fullness. Thank you. Thank you, Lois, for, for, for that reading. And uh, it just gives a bit of context, doesn't it, really, to what we're going to be... Uh, you'd be thinking about today. Right, so I'm just going to come forward now. A microphone here for you, Sandra. <laughs> The words are very, the, the, the words are really easy actually to this. So, this half 
I'm going to be as it's side four times. So the first two times, each side of the chair is the alleyway, 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 alleyway. Yes? That side of the church being prayed to the Lord. But when you're singing, you either stand up if you're physically able, or you raise your hands up. So it's being called to be. Pray ye the Lord. <laughs> Don't look at me though, you, you, you'll get it right if you look at me. <laughs> Grace would say, you all did very well. <laughs> right. So. so we're going to be thinking then about these uh, words of Jesus. So Jesus talks about says, says the, 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 the passage that we read, Jesus said, I am the door, whoever enters through me shall be saved. Now, I want you to think for a minute about whether it should say door or gate. Door or gate. Give me the next slide, please, sir, Phil. It should be a picture of a door or a gate, I think. That's it. So Jesus said, I am the door. Now, a lot of versions of the Bible translate it, I am the gate. Now, if you have a look at the second picture there, 
It's a picture of a sheep pen. And if in the cities, the sheep, there was a special place where the sheep used to, used to uh, be looked after by uh, a, a, a person who was responsible for looking after the sheep. But if the sheep were in the field, they usually built, built a little sheep pen, like the one that you can see in the picture there, which is like a big wall. And the sheep used to go into the middle of it. And on one side of the, uh, the sheep pen was a gate. And you can see at the gate, there's not actually a door or, or actual physical gate on, at the entrance to the sheep pen. It's the shepherd that's sitting in the doorway. And of course, the sheep in those days used to be the door. So that's why Jesus called himself, I am the door, I am the gate. The shepherds in those days used to sit at the entrance to the gate and used it to keep the sheep safe in the sheep pen and also to make sure that nobody that was unwanted actually got in to, to harm the sheep. So that's, that's why Jesus said, I am the door, because he's thinking about himself as a shepherd that protects and looks after the sheep. So just to give a bit of context, really, when we're talking about Jesus saying, I am the door. When we think of a door, we think of the door on the left, don't we? You know, a physical door with a, with a handle on it or, you know, the door I've got uh, up here. But when Jesus was talking about it, he was thinking about this gateway to the sheep pen. So I've got four things for us just to think about uh, this morning. And the points of my talk are all in envelopes dotted around the church. So if we've lost the envelopes, it's going to be a very, very short talk today. So has anybody got envelope number one? Should be an envelope number one somewhere. Ah, well done, Bernadette. <laughs> Actually, Bernadette, would you like to read out what it says on the uh, on the card? On the right. Thank you. Enter through. Whoops. Enter through the door. So I'm going to put this one up on the thing here. I'm hoping this is going to not fall off. So that's the first thing there. Jesus says, enter through the door. And when we, to, when we think about a door, a door is an entrance, isn't it, to something. A door can allow people in and out. We think of all those doors that we saw at the beginning there, the different doors like Buckingham Palace and uh, Wormwood Scrubs. They're, they're the entrance, aren't they, to those particular buildings and Jesus said well you know I am the way that you come to me I am the, the way in which you can have a personal relationship with me so you need to enter through me through the through the door you know people try and uh, get to God don't they these days you know in sorts all sorts of different ways but you know Jesus makes it very clear that he is the entrance he is the way that we get close to god and understand what god is all about and who god is and how god loves us so the first thing then is to enter through the door enter through jesus jesus is the one right the second one number two who's got envelope number two would you like to open this and read it out to us please No entry for thieves and robbers. Okay, thank you. No entry for thieves and robbers.
Now, as I said, when the shepherd used to sit at the entrance to the sheep pen, they were not only there to let the sheep in, it was a way the sheep were able to move freely in and out of the, the sheep pen, but the shepherd also sat there to keep out thieves, robbers, wild animals, anything that might possibly harm the sheep. And of course, today, there are lots of people in this world who actively want to stop us finding out about Jesus, don't they? They, you know, when you think of the, some of the terrible things that are happening in the world today, you know, there's lots of very bad people that are trying to stop us and discourage us from coming to church, hearing about Jesus, about reading our Bibles. You know, when you think in lots of other countries, there are many, many believers who find it very difficult to worship people that are being persecuted for their for their faith. So Jesus wants to protect us, doesn't he, from those things, the people that are going to try and stop us from entering through the gate, actually learning more about Jesus. Right, who's got envelope number three? Ah, brilliant. Thank you. Oh, you've got it over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Door to safety and life. Right. So the door, Jesus, is the door to safety and life. Does the slide look anything like the door? The, 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 <laughs> sort of, doesn't it? Yeah. So, as I said, there are people that are trying to stop us from getting to Jesus, getting to God, aren't they? But Jesus is door. Jesus is the door, the entrance to safety and life. Now, let's not let's not make any mistake that you know we live in a world where we're going to expect trouble and problems and difficulties you know anybody here live a life of no problems and difficulties and worries or anything hands up if you do no because jesus himself said in this life you will have trouble and he's right, isn't he? In this life, you will have trouble. But he also went on to say, but I'm always with you. You know, even though we might have problems and troubles and worries and things in our lives, Jesus says that, you know, he's going to be there with us. And he's also promised us an eternal life, hasn't he? A life which is going to be free from worries and free from problems that we're able to spend the whole of the rest of our lives, the whole of eternity with him. So Jesus is the door to safety, keeps us safe in this world, doesn't he, from harm, but he also is the door to life, to eternal life. Right, who's got envelope number four? Where is it? Ah! Oh, you've got it. You've got it, this one, right? Number four. So, you were having me on last time, weren't you? <laughs> right, what does it say? Right, excellent. Did you hear that? He said, Jesus is the only door. Jesus is the only door.
The thing is, there's lots of lots of people that you know say, well, you know, if you want to get to heaven, this is what you need to do. You know, if you're good, you know, or you follow this religion or you follow that religion, then you know, you'll be fine. But Jesus said, you know, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the only way that you're going to be able to live the kind of life that I'm promising you. And we need to be aware, I think, because we do live in a world today where, you know, people are told strange things, aren't they, about God and about Christianity and about Jesus and things. You know, and people want you to follow other things. But Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way that you'll find to God. And of course, the way that Jesus allows us to have that access to God is through the cross. Under the cross, it's quite a difficult thing to understand because. You know, today we don't think about crosses, do we? You know, when, the only time people see crosses today is if they come into a church, isn't it? You know, not something that many people think about. But of course, in Jesus' day, the symbol of a cross was a symbol of shame, a symbol of somebody, if you were a criminal or you'd done something wrong or something, that was the way people got punished. They were put to death on a, on a cross. And of course, we remember the story of Good Friday, don't we, where Jesus himself was put to death on a cross because people had said that he'd committed crimes, hadn't he, and things, but of course he hadn't. But the reason that God allowed Jesus to be put to death on a cross on Good Friday was he wanted to save us from our sins didn't he for the wrong things that we do in our lives and it's hard to understand isn't it how somebody dying on a cross can save us from sins and help us to to get to heaven to have that relationship with god but you know we just have to trust don't we that that act that jesus did by dying on the cross was enough to help us to get that relationship with God. So let's just be quiet for a moment to just think about, about the cross and about where we stand on that. You know, do we believe that Jesus died to save us from our sins on the cross? So let's just have a, just a moment, just to look at the cross and just to think about what Jesus did for us. We're just going to have a short time of prayer now. As you know, we've, uh, we've started a, a prayer book and we're encouraging people if they've got any prayer requests. Sorry, Catherine. Yeah, that's from some time ago. Okay. All right, okay. And we're encouraging people to write their prayer requests in this, uh, this book. Just kept at the front where you fill in the details for your car registration. So if you have got prayer requests um, that you want to be prayed about during the service, then that's the place to, to put them. So I'll mention a, a few of these things today in our, our prayers. And uh, if there are any other things, obviously, so there'll be a, just a short time of quiet where you can just bring those to, to God.
So let's just pray. Father, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die upon the cross for us. That Jesus is the door, he is the way to you. Father, when we look around the world in which we live, we can see that we do need somebody to save us, Lord, from the wickedness and the terrible things that are going on around us. And Lord, we want to tell other people, Lord, about Jesus, that they might share with us the eternal life that Jesus has to offer. And so, Lord, we just pray that we might know the meaning of Jesus' coming, why Jesus was sent to earth to save us from our sin. Thank you, Lord, that we're here today, that we can just lift up those people, Lord, that are, have got worries and problems and troubles, Lord. Lord, we just pray for the family of Joan Taylor, who was, came to the, uh, some of our jumble sales and she passed away last this week. So we just remember Joan's family in our prayers at the moment and remember any other people, Lord, that we know who have lost loved ones recently. Just pray, Lord, that they might have peace and they might know that even though they're going through a time of trouble, that you are there with them. And we also give thanks for Thomas, who's continuing to recover well from his surgery, to thank it, give thanks for the medicine he has to take, and it's helping him to manage much more easily. We pray too, Lord, for all the churches, Lord, in this area, for the, our own church, Lord, here at Kingsthorpe. We pray for the Methodist meeting at the pastures and for ourselves meeting here. And we, Lord, thank you that we're continuing to move closer together. And we just pray, Father, that you'll guide us and help us. We pray, Lord, for all those other uh, organisations and churches that meet in this building week by week. We think particularly, Lord, at this time of the, the Chinese church. Lord, we see them come and go, Lord, as we uh, leave the church. But Father, we just pray your blessing upon them at this time. We pray too, Father, for anybody else, Lord, that we know that's going through a time of difficulty and trouble. And we just ask, Lord, that you might be with them in their time of need. Let's just take a, a moment or two. If you want to uh, say out loud, that's, that's fine. Or if you just want to quietly remember silently that prayer to God. So let's just have a couple of minutes just to quietly bring our prayers, our own prayers to God at this time. Father, we pray that when we are in trouble, when we have problems, that we might come to you through our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to cast all our burdens, all our cares upon him, because, Lord, you care for us. Lord, we just thank you for our time together today, and Lord, be with us as we go out from here in a, in a few moments after we've sung our final hymn. We just ask these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So our final uh, hymn today is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It just reminds us that he is there to help us through our times of trouble. What?
Oh, we'll, 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 we'll do that at the end. We'll do the memory verse at the end, all right? <laughs> do the, the, the memory verse, which I forgot to do earlier. So let's all say this together, and then we've got a grace that we're going to, uh, a final blessing that we're going to, to say together. So let's say this twice, and then we'll say a final blessing together. Jesus said, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. John 10, verse 9. Jesus said, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. John 10, verse 9. Right, we've got a blessing now that we're going to say that just reminds us that Jesus is the door. So let's just say together to finish. Jesus, you are the door. Through you we are kept safe eternally and receive many blessings. And the God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you.
Well, no, no. I, <laughs> I said to Ruth, remind me never to volunteer for another. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that, right, at uh, Girls Yeah. 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 They're quite, they're quite full all age churches, but they've got a lot of work though, actually. Yeah. 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 Much yeah. more difficult than just a straightforward gold standard service. Yeah.